I cannot remember which Madden this was, but there was a Madden where Vernon Davis. I know the, exactly where you're going. On the San Francisco 49ers. There was a play in their playbook where they basically just ran a little curl route right over the middle, right in front of the line of scrimmage. And Vernon Davis, because he was so athletic, his yards after catch was insane once he got the ball in his hands. My friend, I think, got like 543 receiving yards on me one game with Vernon Davis because I couldn't do anything about it. I would even control the middle linebacker. I'd literally stand in like the spot where I knew the ball was going. And yet somehow Davis would still make the contested catch and then he'd just sprint down the field. Vernon Davis, I'm looking this up right now because I had to remember. It looks like in Madden 11, he was a 96 overall. Yes, I mean, so he had a 90 speed at tight end and 92 acceleration. And I was cooked. Uh, There's no linebacker in the game that can run with him. Yeah, you were absolutely you were absolutely stir fry at that point. I've never been more angry in my life than somebody who just spams one play in Madden. Grow up, grow up, run the ball, run the ball on second and ten. You know, like you're supposed to do. Have some respect and integrity for the game that was forged for you. Opening bell of the NFL Stock Exchange podcast. I'm Trevor Sikama. That is Connor Rogers. Joining you guys for a very special rookie review episode of the show. You know, we were sitting here thinking about it last week and we were like, man, what do we want to do for the show the next week? Thought about, okay, maybe we could do a stock watch. Haven't done that in a little bit. Took a little bit of time. I have, we've done some mock drafts, things like that. But we went, you know what? People have been asking us our opinions of the rookies that we spent so much time talking about six months ago. And we haven't even reviewed him yet. So we're going to do a little rookie review. And the way we're going to do it, free draft style, offensive and defensive rookie of the year candidates here on this show. Connor, how you doing, my friend? I'm great, man. This is an exciting one. We've done this in the past in some different ways, trying to kind of, you know, kind of figure out who's going to win this award, but also give some guys some love because we go five deep across each offense, uh, defense, and you get to some talking points of guys that aren't getting recognition they deserve. So you're right. We always joke on this podcast. We spend a year with an entire draft class and then they go to the NFL and we kind of just sort of like, yeah, on to the next one. Never talk. We don't talk enough <laughs> about rookie classes. So this is the perfect exercise to do that. You know, I was thinking about it. And, and when we get to the end of the season, I would like to do an episode. Now it's tough because the season's kind of pushed back into January, right? So it's, right into you know declaration date and senior bowl and east west shrine bowl and all that but like i would love to do an episode with you where we essentially regrade well i don't know about regrade the draft class maybe we could regrade the 2023 draft class right give it like a two-year cushion yeah now that we got a two-year cushion but then i would also like to do an episode you know like ranking how the rookie classes did maybe not regrading them maybe ranking how they did in their first year i think that would be fun because you're right We right we don't talk enough about the rookies here on this show. For those of you who might be watching on YouTube, if you look at my setting and you go, oh no, he's back in the room. Oh no. The hostage room. I'm hardwired in. The panic room. So I was dealing with, I think, 35 megabytes per second upload when my audio is very choppy and now i'm hardwired in, baby. I'm at 995. So if the audio still sucks... Uh, God might just hate me, but we're powering through. You know, we're powering through. So we're gonna make it happen. You're sure. recording on a potato. Now you're now you're in a a <laughs> gaming center essentially. Dude, Nobody, no dudes don't care about their internet speed more than when they're gaming. Oh, sir, I'm not timing out. One brother, I am buying the one. I'm I'm buying the one thousand megabytes per second package for the internet. At any location that I live, apartment, house, yeah. townhouse, yep. bare minimum. I will not. No. My my game is bad enough. I will not let lag bring me down even further. Let me tell you. They don't know this and don't tell them this. They could charge me whatever they want for gigabyte internet. And I will pay the pr- iron price. I will find a new job. Another job. Not like find a new job where I'm leaving my current jobs. I will add an eighth job to pay off the gigabyte internet to make sure I do not time out in EA college football or back in the day when I used to play Warzone, when one of your teammates would just zap out in front of you, your, your heart would just sink. Like, wow, we're, we're doomed. We were set up to win and <laughs> you're gone. And now we're screwed. It's a one tough of, feeling. One of the best off uh, insults that I heard off the top uh, when I was playing Warzone is like one of my friends, yeah, 
couldn't couldn't hit a kid because he was because he was lagging too much uh and so he's just you know like warping around the right. map you can't even really see him so you can't even really hit him and he's just screaming at the top of his lungs like he's playing at target he's logged on at target at the demo xbox he logged into his gamer tag and he's playing at target with target's internet and I just, I just was, I'm uh, screaming like Target, Walmart, whatever it is. I was gonna say Target catching the strays. I don't even think they do that anymore. But, no, you know. that was that was our childhood where you'd walk in to a place and a game would be set up, and you know back then you actually believe it or not, kids. I know we do have some young listeners. You'd have to walk into a store and buy a hard copy of a video game. So Imagine. games were less accessible in terms of like nowadays. If you want to play something, it's just you download it. It's so it's too easy. The yeah. fact that, you know, whether you play PlayStation or Xbox, you have access to so many games for free with your subscription. It's totally different. Back in the day, though, you literally had to buy a hard copy of every single game that walking into a store and seeing a game fired up uh, at, at a station to play that you didn't have was I don't know. It's a feeling like you can't get back. Like those no. days are gone. It was cool, it, dude. It was true. And like anytime that we would go to like Walmart or Target or something, and my mom had like yes. shopping to do, drop you off. Just drop me off at the video game section, and I'm playing games. You know, like I'm, I'm loading it up. You know, like we're gonna, we're gonna figure out whatever game they got loaded up. It was a sports game. You know, it was good night to anybody else who was there because normally they had like the two controllers and you could play against somebody. I remember going to GameStop once and playing a Madden tournament in GameStop. Like you just, you, you show, you had to show up to play the Madden tournament. You had to play in person. I sucked that weekend. Wasn't on my game, but you know, you know, I just, yeah, you know, the controller wasn't my home controller. You know, yeah, it just wasn't settings. as quick. You know, I hadn't eaten in a couple hours. So, you know, Frame rate just, was down. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, you know, they're using the bullshit target internet, you know, to run the, to run the game. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the gremlins that must show up to a mad in-person Madden tournament. Like, you're just getting spammed. Hit me. By the same three plays over oh and over. Oh, my gosh. And you got no answer. Friendships Spectacular have, catch city. Brother, friendships have... Ent- I don't remember what game this is. We're going to get to the topic of the, of the day, I promise. <laughs> I, don't, I cannot remember which Madden this was. But there was a Madden where Vernon Davis... I on, know exactly where you're going. On the San Francisco 49ers. There was a play in their playbook where they basically just ran a little curl route right over the middle, right in front of the line of scrimmage. And Vernon Davis, because he was so athletic, his yards after catch was insane once he got the ball in his hands. My friend, I think, got like 543 receiving yards on me one game with Vernon Davis because I couldn't do anything about it. I would even control the middle linebacker. I'd literally stand in like the spot where I knew the ball was going. And yet somehow Davis would still make the contested catch and then he'd just sprint down the field. I've never been more angry in my life than somebody who just spams one play in Madden. Grow up. It's Grow up. Run the ball. Accurate. Run the ball on second and 10, you know, like you're supposed to do. Have some respect and integrity for the game that was forged for you. Vernon Davis, I'm looking this up right now because I had to remember. It looks like in Madden 11, I want to say. That's about the timeline. Yeah, he, he can you believe he was a 96 overall. Yes. I mean, so I he had a 90 was, was speed it. at tight end and 92 acceleration. And I was cooked. Uh, there's no linebacker in the game that can run with him. No, yeah, you're absolutely fr- you were absolutely stir fry at yeah. that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was smoked. I, I was I was shish kebab. I was smoked. I was sous vide. Yeah, there was yes. nothing. There was no there was nothing. I was I was reverse seared. There was nothing I could do about it. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Let's get into this draft here. We got a fun topic. We're going to be giving some uh, recognition to some rookies. Now, obviously, the way that we're setting it up here, we're drafting candidates that can win offensive and defensive rookie of the year. So we understand there are some limitations with players that we think are playing well. They aren't really going to have a realistic shot of winning the award. However, Connor, I'm just going to be honest with you. Once we get maybe five or six names collectively into a list. I'm probably just going to throw out some names that I want to give recognition yeah. to, knowing that they probably have no chance to win rookie of the year. Here. I mean, when the field opens up, that is totally yeah understandable. But because you guys voted, uh, I, I would say like, not, not not unanimously, but it was, it was pretty heavy in one direction. A lot of people love the free draft. So we're going to do free draft here. Obviously, we're going to have 
one of us get the first pick and then it's a snake after that. So then you get two picks and you get two picks and you get two picks. You guys know how it goes, but there's no order. It's not like we're starting with offense and then going to defense. It's a free draft. We can go to whichever list we want at any time we want. So Connor, I, uh, I kind of threw it right back in your face when you gave me the first overall pick last draft. Do you want it in this draft? I don't, but I will take it. So we keep the back and forth going. All right. All right. Because I mean, the first pa- first pick in this one's very chalk, right? I think that's why. I don't know. Is it? Yeah, it's Jaden Daniels. Oh, I, now, wouldn't have gone, I, I wouldn't have gone Jaden Daniels. Yeah, you would have. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't have. I'm not owned. <laughs> I've never been owned. I've never been owned. <laughs> <laughs> not online, at least. <laughs> yeah, it's Jaden Daniels right now. Now, this actually has gotten more interesting, ironically. He's minus 145 on DraftKings. I believe his odds were even deeper than that before the rib injury. He is minus money. Yeah, he was. It was even heavier, though, before the rib injury. I think he was like minus 250 at one point. Now, the rib injury, we got news today. It sounds like they're calling it week to week. It's not a lock that he plays against the Bears, which is fascinating because, of course, Caleb Williams is the runner up. Indeed. In a a tighter field, Caleb's plus 115. I mean, he's made up serious ground here in a very short span of time. So the only thing that could stop Jaden from winning this award, it feels like, with how this offense is humming, how he's playing, the rushing element that he also gives on top of passing efficiently, is health. It's really health. Which, to be fair, that was one of the biggest components of Jaden Daniels as a prospect. We knew he had a ton of talent. One of the things people always wondered about him was staying healthy. It sounds like he's avoided the worst with this injury. He's the number one overall pick for me, counting offense and defense, because he has done the most. If this award was given out today, it would be his by a nice margin. He he is playing fast in this offense through the air and on the ground. He is creating explosive running plays, not just scrambling plays. I think he's been a really accurate passer. I think he's seeing the field better at the NFL level than he saw at LSU, which is uh, a huge credit to not only him, but the coaching staff of the commanders and how they've get, you know gotten him really comfortable in this offense. And I think the offense does play fast in a way that helps them cover up some of the issues on an offensive line that's overachieved, but we know isn't an all-pro offensive line. So Jane Daniels, to me, uh, is the clear-cut number one choice here. And once again, I will reiterate, the only thing, and it's not missing a game doesn't even affect his chances. It's if mm-hmm. if he missed a big chunk of the season and Caleb continues to get hot, that's the only way he doesn't win this award. That is why I don't think I would have taken Jaden number one overall. Now, I think it's fair. Now, if if I wouldn't have taken Jaden number one overall, you you probably would have back to back quarterbacked me, and so that would you basically would you you in my opinion you probably would have then been a lock to win one of these, <laughs> and so I think it's a little bit different here. But um, I feel like I might be a I feel like I might be a lock to win this with with, with my first pick. I am going to go with Jared Verse for Defensive Player of the Year. Oh, okay. He, he is he is going to be my first pick here because, you know, he's not blowing anyone out of the water when it comes to odds to win Defensive Player of the Year right now. Um, who is who is second? Oh, I just had this up. Oh, Latu Latu. Yeah. So Jared Jared Verse right now is like plus two twenty on Fanduel. Latu Latu is plus five hundred. Uh, and then you got a, a a couple of other guys behind him. I, I don't want to say too many picks as we're kind of going on here, but it's not like you don't know who Latu Latu is. Um, but I do think when I look at Jared Verse's stats. One, he's he's getting a ton of volume just with playing time. And if this guy doesn't get hurt, he's already got 32 pressures. His passers win percentage yeah. is above 22%. Like, he's a monster. They're, they're building their defensive line attack around what Jared Verse can do. The power profile that we talked about him at showcasing it out at uh, FSU over the last two years, that is showing up heavily. He's an even better pass rusher when it comes to just freelancing at the NFL level than I thought that he was going to be, especially right out of the gate. So... Versus have an unbelievable season. He's, he's also got a crap ton of missed tackles, which is uh, hilarious. He's got like linebacker levels of, of missed tackles, and he's a defensive end. Which shows you how close he is, though, to making some big plays, Correct. too, I would argue with you. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it is bizarre. So Verse is, Verse is the guy that, that I'm going to go with here as my first pick to take him off the board. <sighs> Way to keep your cards close to the vest. I never would have guessed that in a million years. And after your explanation, I don't think it's it's off the like cuff at all. I don't I think it's totally rational. Yeah, I'm 
right, I'm looking up one more thing about a player. Maybe I, the gamesmanship, the gamesmanship of a free draft. Like this is what you miss. This is this is the out. part that because I got a player. I got a player that I would take next. Okay. Yeah, but you, I don't you, know if that's the most likely to win the award. And is there a chance that you might pass them up on the back to back? I feel like there is. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Caleb Williams then. Give I would have been shocked if you didn't give, do give this. me Caleb Williams. I'm gonna take Caleb Williams off the board. Not the player I actually would have taken next, to be honest with you. But again, playing a little bit of a strategy here. See if I can get you. See if I can pull a fast one over okay. on my good co-host buddy here. But no, Caleb Williams. Look, if you take out Week One, which I understand that's not how football works, but if you look at Week Two on, he has gotten better marginally in every single game as a yeah. passer since then including the game that we saw against jacksonville where he was on a roll a lot of big time throws a lot of special throws uh really high passing grade almost an elite passing grade in that game he is playing his best ball right now and there's still times that, okay i think he might be a little slow to get to a second or third read I, but it's okay. Everything that he was bringing to the table, how confident he is, uh, how the how well the run game is playing around him, the offensive lines played better off over the last couple of games, and you got to think that him and Shane Waldron have something going on with offensive coordinator and play caller and quarterback here. So uh, I, I just think that you know you talk about Caleb's rise, like how how close he has closed the gap between him and Jaden, despite how phenomenal Jaden has been. And Jaden has very clearly, in my opinion, been the better player to this point in time during the season. But how quickly that gap closed tells me how much people would love to vote for Caleb Williams if he gives them the ability to have that conversation. So not perfect from Caleb, but somebody that I think I should take here is this number two. So I got Caleb Williams and Jared Verse here. Yeah, I like it. You you just legitimately gave yourself a real shit. When you're picking in the back-to-back, -back, you know, the second and third pick of this draft, I think the strategy would probably want to be, hey, can I find a way to maybe steal both of these awards? And, you know, versus the favorite for a reason, the points you outline, and Caleb is really closed this gap because of the level he's playing at, and the Bears are looking good, which helps them. And let's just be real. Once again, like, Jaden has a higher injury risk, but Jaden is the favorite because he's been tremendous so now is where it gets kind of fun honestly yes yes because th those were probably what i would have predicted for the first three picks and the odds far and away would tell you those should be the first three picks now is where it kind of opens up and my first uh pick of these next two is going to be layatu latu because that's okay. the that's the closest gap he is plus 250 while versus plus 200 via DraftKings. Latu doesn't have necessarily the sack production that you would hope for, but I think the pressures have been there overall. And I think the overall play has been there for him. Um, I, I think that he's, you know, he's had some moments where he gets really, really close. This is looking like a solid pick for the Colts. And I just think that with him in verse, you know, you got to remember these are human voted awards mm -hmm. where, it's it feels like it's right down neck and neck here because they're both really close in terms of sack totals and sack totals, whether we hate them or not or undervalue them or not, they will matter for the voters with this award. So Leatu Latu is somebody to me that I think is yeah, clearly right in the thick of this and somebody that I want as my number one defensive rookie of the year choice here. Yeah, 16 pressures from him, 14.9 passers win percentage. I mean, I, I think that Latu is going to be in the conversation when we oh, get yeah. down to it. Now, it, it depends. So, you know, can you know, 16 pressures from Latu uh, verse has double that, right? So like, is verse going to just continue to be on an absolute tear or is he going to quiet down a little bit? Is that going to open the door for Latu to get there? Um, I think that it was always going to be a little bit of time for Latu to sort of acclimate to the NFL size, speed, strength, all of that, because so much of how he won at UCLA was precision, right? He knew what the offensive tackle he was going up against was capable of. I wouldn't have said that that would have been something that existed for him right out outside of the gate. So Latu also would have been my number two defensive player off the board, but I think that that puts a... That puts you in a very interesting spot here with your next pick because there's a couple of guys that I think you could make an argument for that you would want to pick or you would want to get out of this sort of second round here for you with. Right. So for the actual gambling sake, 
in theory, you would think the next pick would be Quinion Mitchell because he's plus 550 compared to Verse and Latu's plus 200 and plus 250. Mm. But I am not going to take Quinion Mitchell. Okay. Um, I am going to take Malik Neighbors because I think Malik Neighbors is drastically undervalued and underappreciated in this market. And I felt this way. So full transparency, this was actually my biggest wager for futures this year, going back to July. I I liked Malik Neighbors a lot in uh, where the odds stood because his preseason odds, I think I had him at 18 to 1. And he's actually regressed from that. He's now 20 to 1 because of the injury. Before the injury, I think he was closer to like plus 650, plus 800. So mm-hmm. Missing the two games because of concussion protocol really hurt Malik Neighbors. Obviously, the overall market is down on him because the Giants are uh, horrendous on offense for the most part, not only under quarterback, but now they're missing Andrew Thomas as well. But here's the pathway for Malik Neighbors winning and why he's my next pick. Number one, he's an insurance policy because I have Jaden Daniels, right? So that's a factor. Like if if Jaden gets hurt and falls out of this race, it's down to Caleb and neighbors. Now, while Caleb Williams is taking great steps and is deservedly not only plays quarterback, so he's the number two here. We're only a couple of games removed from Caleb Williams, you know, really struggling to function at this position for the most part. Now he's been great recently, but it was, it was a bit of a tough start for Caleb Williams. I thought those first four ish games, And then he's absolutely feasted on Carolina and Jacksonville, as you would expect him to do, which he did. So he gets the credit for that. Neighbors, to me, in terms of pure production, has an incredible floor here because he is just peppered with targets. And I know it didn't look that way in the Giants' latest loss to the Eagles, a game where they benched Daniel Jones at one point. There's been some drama after Malik Neighbors saying he was open in the second half when he didn't get the ball. Uh, Brian Dable was asked about it. You know, he's probably not wrong. He's probably right. There's a good chance. (laughs) So I just think at the end of the day, this team doesn't have a lot offensively. And he is guaranteed, in my opinion, going forward, he should average double digit targets per week. And neighbors, when you look at him as pacing, I mean, there's a world where he easily gets about 1,200, you know, 1,250 yards and almost double digit touchdowns in a normal year that's good enough to win offensive rookie of the year the problem is he has a guy that's playing at a superstar level in front of him and jane daniels who i have and then caleb williams who's heating up on a good team Mm -hmm. but i like malik neighbors here as my insurance my non-quarterback insurance policy because i think his production floor is nearly guaranteed and as a rookie that is very very rare air neighbors has been awesome when he's out on the field there is no doubt about it. Uh, I, I, w- when I was sort of leaving a prospect that I wasn't sure if you were going to take on the turn, you didn't actually. It was between this person that I thought of and neighbors and the guy that I am going to select. I'm going to get to here in a second before we get to that. The NFL is crazy, right? We're talking about a lot of different things. We're talking about rookies here on this show, the ups and downs of how they could change franchises. The trade deadlines are going to be coming up. This football season, in order to keep up with all of it, we're listening to a new podcast called The Offensive Line with Annie Agar. Annie is an NFL insider. You might know her from her uncomfortable team meetings on social series that you probably see on Instagram, on TikTok, basically everywhere. She's all over the timeline. The Offensive Line with Annie kicks it back with NFL stars, celebs, super fans, all that. They unpack the weekly lines, odds, spreads, with all the brand's sharp wit and banter that you're used to from her content. It's packed with all sorts of humor. It's must-listen to keep up with the latest in news and NFL culture. You can follow the, the Offensive Line podcast on the Wondery app or wherever you guys get your podcasts, wherever you might be listening right now. You can also access bonus episodes and listen ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus. So, look, Malik Neighbors, not a bad pick at all whatsoever. Dude's I know where stud. you're going. Dude's, dude's an absolute stud. He is a monster. But there is another player who is an absolute stud who I think is going underrated because he plays on a team that when you talk about this team, you just talk about the bad. And we're going to get to a point where we're sick and tired of talking about the bad, and we're going to keep pointing at this player because I think he is going to continue to produce. My next pick is Las Vegas Raiders tight end Brock Bowers. Oh, hello. I had it wrong. Dude, Brock Bowers has been nuts i didn't know this until i looked it up this morning connor remember all that talk that we had about well how high do you draft a tight end right we talked about kyle pitts he drafted him really high when you draft a tight end really high they have a 
rookie controlled contract. So you get a good chunk of guaranteed money right away. Well, that's not normally something that you see a lot from the tight end position. And it was like, okay, if you're drafting Brock Bowers in the top five, he better produce like a top five tight end right away because you're going to be paying him like it. Well, he ends up going number 11. No, where'd he go? 11? 13th, I thought. 13th, 13th, something. So he went outside of the top 10. Dude's an absolute steal at this point. I mean, for what he, we are seven weeks into the season, Connor. He has the number one overall grade for tight ends in the NFL. He has the number, and I'm not just talking rookies. Any tight end. He has the top overall grade. He has the top receiving grade for tight end. He has the most receiving yards for a tight end. And he has a 28.0 threat percentage of how much they use him in the offense. Specifically with Devontae Adams not no, no longer there. This dude is destined to get over 1,000 yards receiving. It is just a matter of how many he can get as long as he stays healthy. Brock Bowers was the best tight end in college football for two straight years. You could argue three straight years if you want to throw his freshman year into that as well, but that's a little bit more of a conversation. For the last two years, though, specifically, not even close. Best tight end in all of college football. Gets drafted in the top 15. He's already a monster for the Raiders that have to run their offense through him from this point moving forward if they want to have any semblance of offensive success. I think he is, because where where is he on the betting? He was... He's down uh, there. Yeah, he is... Plus 4,000. That's my favorite bet, to be honest with you. Now, I know it would be a long shot, but when you talk about what guys should be valued versus what they have now, that's my favorite bet of the group. Brock Bowers has been a monster. I love it. That's I wasn't expecting you to make that pick, but he's been phenomenal. And with Devontae Adams off the Raiders, the amount of targets this guy is getting and will continue to get is and he, he maximizes them he's the offense there he really is in terms of odds value brock bowers is the value play of this group uh so my next guy here i think after i take this player off the board you mentioned it gets fun it, or you mentioned it got fun after Jaden and caleb and, and verse were off the board i think it gets fun after i take this player off the board I'm going to take Brian Thomas Jr. off the board next, the wide yeah. receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, especially for the way that the offense has been humming very clearly. They like getting him involved a lot, certainly deep down the field, some of the biggest plays. And, you know, voters like that stuff, right? Give me the highlights. Give me the give me the game-breaking plays. And Brian Thomas Jr., I feel like he's going to be on the receiving end of a lot of that for Trevor Lawrence if the Jags are going to continue to have offensive success this season. So Thomas Jr. has been fantastic. Uh, I was a little bit nervous about him coming into the NFL, just like, okay, what's the route tree look like from him? Is he right. just a vertical guy? He is proving that he is even more of an all-around wide receiver in Jacksonville than he was last year with LSU. So they're going to continue to feed him. I think he's only going to continue to get better. Brian Thomas Jr. is my next pick here. Yeah, no, I mean, he's got over 500 yards. He's been phen phenomenal. Was that the guy that you thought I was going to yeah. go with? Okay. Yeah, I thought you were going to go when you started to say like underappreciated and stuff. Brian Thomas Jr. has been amazing. Yes. In an offense that, let's be real, at times is totally clueless. And he's yeah. been very consistent. I mean, he's got four touchdowns in seven of his games already. Yep. And they're not just, he didn't have like one three touchdown game against a bum squad. He has a touchdown in four separate games. And he's, he's as advertised, a big play threat, a great athlete. But I think he's been more polished than anyone expected, as you pointed out. I I loved the player, and I'm going to be honest with you. I I felt like I was as high on him as you can be in that draft, and I didn't expect this this quickly. Yeah, I thought there would be a little bit – he'd be a little bit of a go-ball, explosive play guy, but he's just more refined right away, more so than I ever thought. And yep, you're so. right. I mean, you you were you were higher on him than I was, and he's yeah exceeding so many expectations. So nice, uh, nice haul for you, by the way. You've you've kind of cornered, you know, the offensive rookie of the year market after the big. I got the big favorite I know. at the top. I'm happy with this. Uh, two picks, and like we, we keep saying, the door kind of opens. I want to make sure I get my odds board back up. God, you'd think I'd know how to use a computer by now. No, nah, I don't. There we go. Okay, I lost the odds board for a second. <laughs> so, the top four favorites for Offensive Rookie of the Year are gone, and then a deeper cut in Brock Bowers, although I agree with you on the value. Defense of the Rookie of the Year has been a different story for us. We had Verse and Latu go as deserved. I think I'm going to take Quinion Mitchell 
here and kind of okay. kind of stack my shares on the defensive rookie of the year market. I I'll be honest with you, it's a very very difficult award for a corner to win. I even the year Sauce won it and Sauce was great his rookie season. You basically need a lot of the other position groups to be really quiet. But to be fair to Quinion Mitchell, they have been. Like even as much as we love Latu and Verse, they're are they going to get double digit sacks this year? No. Not even close. So yeah, that's unless, what unless verse explodes. Um, yeah, unless you get hot and you have like a three sack game and a two sack game and then right. kind of stack a couple in a, individually. Right. So I'll take Mitchell here, who's I think run a little hot and cold, but more hot. He's, I, he's playing so many snaps. You he's, know, dude, he's I mean, the situation he's been thrusted into is a lot to ask where I think he's been very good. All things considered for the most part. I mean, he's allow he's allowing a 79.8 passer rating when targeted. I think he's only been called for one penalty, and that was week one against the Packers. Damn, he's really he's been very steady. That's what we have him logged as. Um he doesn't allow yards after the catch very often either, which is which we like Quinion Mitchell, one of the big selling points is he is very physical when the before the ball gets there and after the ball gets there. Mm -hmm. So and and listen, Quinion Mitchell's plus 550. So the market is telling you that he's got a very good chance to come up and take this award un unless the pass rushers like Trevor hinted at get hot and stack up a couple big performances. Like he's right in the thick of this thing. Right. So right. I'll take Quinion Mitchell. I'm going to go back to the offensive rookie of the year well here mm -hmm. just because this guy can kind of stack big performances in bunches. But the problem is in this offense, he also disappears at times, which I don't think is fully his fault. I'll take Marvin Harrison Jr. Who is uh, yeah, that was the, that was the last obvious one. Yeah, right. On the talent side of things. Yeah. You, you this early in the year, you, you do default back to talent. He's got talent and it's not like we're waiting on him because we've seen him have big weeks before the, it's, it is odd. The lack of consistency him and Kyler have, I will say, and to be honest with you, I don't think Kyler's been great this year. When I watch, Kyler also has been really hot and cold. In my opinion. yes, that's a better fair way to put it. Yeah. It's he has like these really big weeks where it feels like he can't miss or he'll explode for a big run, and then I'll have these weeks where he does the Kyler, you know, Mario music kind of like shuffling backwards in the pocket and then runs to the sideline and. Like keeps <laughs> pump faking. Yeah. And then just nothing happens. Yeah. A lot of those. So, I mean, so you look at Marv. He had obviously the, the one catch for four yards in the opener. Yeah. Everybody yeah. panics. Yeah. He's trash. He sucks. He's cheeks. What a mistake this was. It's over. How did he get drafted? Change the name. Change the last name. Yeah. Change his name to. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't want to disrespect them because then he goes for four and one thirty for two. Yeah, I got nothing. Sometimes you just got nothing in the tank. Full transparency for everybody here. We're recording this a day after uh, both the Mets and Jets seasons ended in the same two hour span. Very hey, interesting man, come exercise. On. Come on. Very interesting exercise to witness. One team season started when we were still wearing winter jackets in March. And the other team's season started in the, after the first week of September, but somehow their seasons both ended on in the same two-hour window. Very impressive feat. So shout out to the Mets. I love them with all my heart. They gave me so many great memories this year, and that's where I'll stop talking about the New York teams. Hey so man, the <laughs> Rangers are undefeated. I mean, I do this every year. Every year, Jets hopes die. And I, I'm not like one of those hockey fans. This and I, this happens in New York a lot. It happens everywhere a lot, where it's like, ah, oh, it's almost the playoffs. Like I'm gonna get into it. Like I am one of those. I don't do any hockey content or anything. So it's the one time I'm just such a fan. I feel I, the same way. I am so like so irrationally yeah. in from yeah. the second the puck drops for the season, and they're yeah. they're a wagon. Like they're an absolute wagon. So yeah. I'm enjoying that lightning. Stamkos was holding him back. I've often said this. People are, are starting to figure that out. He was the problem. Is Gensel off to just like an absolute nuclear star? I haven't no, actually seen no, him play Kucherov. that much. No, Kucherov. Well, Kucherov is <laughs> Kucherov's just, yeah, he's, he's, he's God he's, mode. He's going nuclear. Yeah, they're, they are mad that he got robbed of, um, 
of the MVP last year. Oh, so seven goals in four games. That's normal. Yeah, very casual. Extremely casual. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. What a player. So then Marv goes 4 one thirty and 2 and everybody goes, oh, wow, maybe he should have been taking top 10. And then he was kind of normal for the two weeks after that. 11 targets, 564 and a touchdown, another 545 and a touchdown. He's fine. And then he uh, he got hurt against Green Bay after a rough week against San Francisco, but he cleared concussion protocol on time where he's, he's playing right before we rec- after we record this. So you're just betting on talent. You're hoping for a couple more of those two touchdown weeks, over 100 yards. And once again, I think this is not just a Marvin Harrison Jr. problem. I think this is a problem within the offense as a whole and finding consistency. So at this point of the draft, I mean, you, you, you bet on talent. He's loaded with talent. He should be loaded with more opportunity. I've been frustrated with some of the limitations at opportunity. But yeah, I mean, he's now... What pick is this? One, two, three, four. This is like the 10th Ten. or 9th yeah, pick. Ten. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be him. Yeah, I, 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 th- he was sort of the last like big obvious name that we have here in guys that are actually capable of winning the the award. I think I'm about to draft maybe the last two players that I think legitimately have a chance to win this award. So we get to totally open it up after this. Although I actually didn't even look up how well this one player is playing. Because I didn't think it was very well. I didn't think he was playing well enough for it to matter. Hold on, we're gonna scroll. We're doing some. We're gonna do some research on the show here because I sort of like owe it to my own list to actually be able to pick the right one. Where are we here? Uh, uh, I don't see anything. Where is this player? <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 hold on. I'm clicking the filter. Well, I, I, I understand. We're doing this live on the show, and this, this makes for phenomenal. This phenomenal is how you podcast. Media. When this you go to you podcast. broadcasting yeah. school, they show you a video in broadcasting one on one, and it's of this. us just sitting here going, "Yes, this is me researching. I'm researching. I hope you all enjoy this." <laughs> we'll get uh, there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick Byron Murphy the second. Okay. Uh, who has missed three games due to injury, but he's back. He played really well this past weekend. He has a 15.9 pass rush win percentage, so I think there's a good chance that the numbers are saying that he's going to make up for lost time, and I think he could potentially be in this defensive player of the year conversation when it's all said and done. And then the player that I was looking up was Dallas Turner, and I'm I'm not going to pick Dallas Turner. I'm actually going to pick Braden Fisk. Um, Fisk has 19 total pressures. He's got a sack. The issue is he's got like a 6.3 pass rush win percentage. So I don't know how much backfield production he's actually going to be able to rack up in the second half of this season, but he's on the list. He has odds to win this, this, this award. And he at least had one game where he was an elite pass rusher. He had one game where he, where he graded out as an elite pass rusher and the rest of them are, uh, not so hot. It, it's a much more cold start to his rookie season. But those two defensive linemen, I think, at least have a shot to win the award. Turner is slow. His his start has been much slower. Doesn't have a lot of snaps through the first half of the season. He would really have to catch fire, in my opinion. And I just don't think that I don't think that Flores' defensive structure operates in that way for him to be a major stat stuffer. So that's why I I don't know if you're about to pick him. Name alone, it would make sense for him to go at some point in this draft, but. I'll go with Byron Murphy and Braden Fisk here as my next two picks. Okay, so you go defense for both Byron Murphy, Braden Fisk. I don't think anything too stunning there. Um, Byron Murphy was a hot defensive rookie of the year pick. The injuries obviously sunk him a a, a little bit where he's 20, 22 to one plus uh, 2200 Fisk pretty close there plus 1800. Yeah, you're right. Dallas Turner is a the the defensive rookie of the year board is mind blowing. Right. By the way. Like, yeah, yeah. When you just to give everybody some perspective here, names that haven't been taken that are even higher than those guys include Evan Williams, the safety in the Packers. Mm-hmm. You know, Tyke Smith. Mm-hmm. Kamari Lasseter has been balling out for the Texans. Mm hmm. It's Jarvis Brownlee is plus 1800. Is he really? Yeah, he is. Wow. Senior bowl legend, senior bowl legend, Jarvis Brown. He really was. It's yeah, it's a very strange board. 
uh, to wrap your head around. I think I'm going to go back to the offensive rookie of the year well here. And I'm going to take Drake May. Oh, nice. I was not going to pick him. Because he's a quarterback, number one. And quarterbacks have, they have the quickest, you know, boost to go up the board in these races. That's just, that's just how, like for perspective for everybody, when you're betting futures and awards, and this is a pretty outlier example, but it matters with context here. Joe Flacco won comeback player of the year award and he played six games. So yeah, when, when you play quarterback, you don't need the and sample come size. Back from? He, he said it himself. Nothing. The couch. <laughs> the couch. I, think, I think he said that. No, he did. He did. It, it, Which it, was amazing. It's a, it's a dumbass award. It's well, you, you heard what happened this year, right? It's a massive problem right now that for a while, Sam Darnold was one of the front runners or like in the cluster of guys that could win it this year. Right. And the league is trying to uh, tell the voters, but I'm sure some of them are 80 years old and you need to send a Raven to get the message to them that like he, he's not supposed to be eligible because he's not coming back from an injury. He's coming right. back from, you know, reformed in Kyle Shanahan's school well, of backup do, quarterbacks. Doesn't the NFL. Oh no, it's, it's AP. Is that who it is? Is it the AP comeback player of the year? Probably. I, whoever it is, like you, like, you send out the memo. Like, the league sends out the memo. It's like the Subway meme. It's like, oh, Subway sucks. My brother in Christ, you made the sandwich. <laughs> you cre- We're you trying cons- to figure out who did this. Right. Like, like, oh, like, we don't want you to vote for Sam Darnold. Don't put his name on the list. Don't put his name on the ballot. Yeah, right. Honestly, just do the work. And give out the list of eligible names. Don't tell people they can just vote for whoever they want, but they really shouldn't vote for this guy because he doesn't meet the criteria of an award that doesn't have distinct criteria written in ink. Yeah. So that's the that's the issue. And how I get all the way back to offensive rookie of the year with this is quarterbacks don't have to do a lot in a larger sample to go up boards. Let me put it like this. If Drake may... I'll pull up the Patriots schedule right now. And wins don't even matter that much in offensive and defensive rookie of the year specifically because the year Garrett Wilson and Sauce won, the Jets stunk. Or they weren't that, they were like the middle of the pack team at best. And they both won. So say Drake May beats the Jets and then he, he plays the Titans, Bears, and Rams. Say he goes two and two in that stretch and he's pretty damn good. He's throwing two or three touchdowns a game. He's running a little bit. Now their supporting cast is horrific. So this is not an I'm not saying this is a shoe in. There's a reason why the guy's odds are plus 4500, 45 to 1, which is like that's you're throwing a Hail Mary out there. Mm-hmm. But Drake May, if he beats the Jets Sunday and it's cuz of Drake May, Drake May will leapfrog no matter what they do. Brock Bowers, Marvin Harrison Jr., Bo Nix probably, although they're winning, but Bo isn't doing much. Mm-hmm. Drake may will be in the top four to five people to win this award just because he's a quarterback. So that's why I'm taking Drake may in this spot who uh, looked pretty good against Jacksonville. He's still making some mistakes, but he's not working with much and he's making some plays. So I agree with you. I, I wasn't going to pick Drake. I understand the logic the process of, of it. Yeah. Taking the hail Mary full pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go back to defense here. And you only this, got two defensive players, right? Yeah. Latu only, and Mitchell? Yeah, Latu and Mitchell. I Because I don't yeah. like how wide open this board is, honestly. It's like, yeah, uh, you know, put everyone in a blender and pick one out or out, out of a hat. It's just a very weird board. And I'm, I'm kind of pulling a U here, and I'm doing uh Yeah, you got to research on the show. I'm researching you, on the show. You got you to research on the show. How quickly can you type as well as speak? That is, that is the true art of being a broadcaster. You want to start a podcast? This is how you do it. Get ready to talk a lot of random babble. Man, I, it's crazy to me that the odds, like we're in the range now where Kamari Lasseter is very relevant. Dallas Turner is very relevant. Mm-hmm. They haven't even been doing anything lately. No. Nope. Nothing. Nope. So I, w- I would argue, I would argue that Kamari, I would argue that Kamari doesn't even have the best chance on his team. That's, that's very fair. Yeah, that's I think that's fair. I like your Byron Murphy pick a lot the more I look at it. Not only is he 
because he was good before he got hurt. He was good before he got and hurt. And after he got hurt. And he was a pretty popular pick for this. Like The betting market liked him a lot. He's not even in the top 10 right now. Is he really? You're, no, dude, he, they have him. They have him twenty-two to one. Well, Vegas there are, listens. D- Vegas directly listens to this show, so the second it goes live, Byron Murphy the second's odds are just gonna t- just they're the, just gonna hit the floor. Twelve players ahead of him. They the markets because they don't know the draft very well. They do use like draft analyst stuff to set odds. By the way, like it, Daniel Jeremiah drops a. I don't want to say a mock draft because player over unders on picks isn't isn't a market that's readily available very early, but they, that's how they make the like: will he be a first round pick or will he be a top ten pick? Mm. It's not just Daniel Jeremiah; like a lot of draft analysts. It's yeah, because they're Rogers, they're Trevor getting Sikuma, yeah, yeah. the NFL stock exchange podcast. It's, it's leading the charge. They're tapped in. We know the government's watching on all of our screens, so Vegas is probably watching as we record the show. They don't even wait for the show to go live. The odds have already sunk. Sorry, people. You're just not going to get much here. I'm going to take Tavondre Sweat, by the way. Ooh, okay. Who has been very good for Tennessee. Better than I thought. Way better than I thought, because he's... I didn't... Full transparency, did you think through six games, Tavondre Sweat would be nearing 300 snaps? No. I thought he'd play like 120 by now. Right. He's played 265. Yeah. Which has been A lot the difference. more than I thought. A and lot more than I thought he would get. The reason why he realistically, you know, isn't under real consideration to win this award is because a player like him doesn't post the pass rush production needed to win this award. But if you're just a tape junkie, Sweat's been a presence for their front against the run. And that opens the door for all the players around him. And he is playing enough snaps. Tennessee's defense has been very impressive to me this year. I know not a lot of things have gone right for the Titans. But I think they're well coached and talented on defense. And I think Sweat's looking like a really, really good draft pick uh, in the second round. I think the solid pick. I again I, I that's bets he is playing better than I thought he was going to. More of a um, shout out than a guy I think can really win the award. Probably. But, probably but that's that's the point of the draft that we're at. We we said that the latter half of the draft it was it was gonna be a lot of shout out stuff because we're drafting ten and realistically there's probably not nearly as many, but uh, all right, I got a back-to-back coming up. This show is sponsored to you by BetterHelp. Wanted to wanted to shout these guys out first. Think of a time when you were recently, you know, you didn't feel yourself, right? It felt like you were wearing a costume or a mask. Well, October, Halloween, it's that time of year. That's what everybody's doing. And look, you know, dressing up, putting on masks, everything for Halloween, that's all good and fun. But you don't want to be wearing masks, you know, at work, in social situations, around your family, in relationships, things like that. You want to be able to be yourself. Therapy you can learn to accept all parts of yourself so you can take off that mask. Masks are, for ho- masks are for Halloween. They are not for your emotions. I've been doing therapy for over a year and a half. People who listen to this podcast regularly know that, and I've really loved it. it it's been an area to kind of just do what I just said. Accept a lot of different parts of yourself, the things that you love and the things that you don't. You can amplify the things that you love, and you can really correct and try to get better at the things that you don't. It allows you to be the best version of yourself that you've ever been. Uh, therapy can be a really useful way to help a good, have a good understanding of how the mind actually works, become aware of your own patterns and behaviors, how to improve them. Useful for everybody too. It's not just people struggling with something specific. I know that's a that's a stigma with therapy, but it's not just that. It can be for that. Of course, it can be helpful for that, but it's not just that. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is convenient, flexible, entirely on the line way to get therapy that is right for you. Fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Visit betterhelp.com slash NFLSE to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash NFLSE. Uh, all right, I think I'm going uh, off the beaten path with this one. This is a name that you brought up before. Uh, I'm going to go back to the defensive side of things. I got Jared Verse. I got Byron Murphy the second. I got Braden Fisk. Now I'm going to go with Evan Williams, the fourth-round safety for the Green Bay Packers. One, he plays for a team that a lot of people care about, right? Anytime the Packers are playing well, they're going to be in the news. Two, he's playing next to a safety that's already getting a lot of recognition. So Green Bay's secondary is already having a spotlight shined upon them. Three, he is the highest-graded rookie that we have in the NFL in our system this year at an 89.4. He's got... Two forced incomplete. I mean, he's been a stud. He's all over the stat sheet. He's got two forced incompletions. He's got himself an interception. He's allowed five receptions, but only for 58 yards. And he's got an 82.2 coverage grade, as well as an 81.7 run defense grade. They're using this guy everywhere as a strong safety, as a free safety. And if he continues to stay healthy and play at a really high level, I genuinely believe that a couple more interceptions could be coming for him. And 
uh, who knows? Maybe it's, you know, Xavier McKinney's been in a spot to get a lot of interceptions. Maybe it'll flip and, and Williams can get some of those. And both those guys can get a ton of recognition as maybe the best safety duo in the NFL. It's kind of crazy to say that about a fourth round pick that not a lot of people knew going into the draft. But Williams is playing unbelievable. I mean, the confidence in which he is playing and the anticipation that he has gives me reason to believe that the best is even still yet to come for him, or at least that good play can be sustained from Evan Williams. So I'm going to take him off the board here because I think his play. Uh, has warranted that and then oh man do I round out defense or do I nah let me go Bo Nix I'm just gonna I'll take Bo Nix just to get him off the just to get him off the board I feel like it would be wrong if we went through this exercise and I didn't get Bo Nix here for a uh, offensive rookie of the year people that were listening to the podcast over a year ago know that uh, I love Bo Nix I had him in my top three quarterbacks kind of number two going into the season uh, last year before Drake May. Uh, and obviously, Drake May outplayed him and ended up being my QB2. Jaden was my QB3. Um, but, man, I, I like Nick's a good amount. I thought he was a top 40 player in this class, and it's really cool to see some of the success. Okay, it's not perfect. It's not quite consistent yet. But uh, I think a lot of people thought that the NFL would just be so overwhelming for Nick's, and I, I just don't think that that's the case. So playing well. Uh, Broncos are winning. Maybe not because of him, but they're certainly not losing because of him either. So I'll take Bo Nix here uh, to get the uh, final quarterback off the board. Yeah, it goes back to my argument for Drake May. It's a quarterback. Two big weeks for Bo Nix can kind of propel his odds all the way forward. That's all you need at quarterback. It's it's crazy how quickly you can kind of flip your, you know, your course of action. And man, the offensive rookie of the year board just like that is quite grim, to be honest with you. I mean... I know Keon Coleman is coming off a, a big week. You can take they, the Hail Mary if you want. They just traded for Amari Cooper. So the opportunity for Keon Coleman, once again, I know he had a good week, but he still only had seven targets. He's just not going to be a guy to me that gets more than four targets every week. So well, who's the Hail, Hail Mary? Your boy. Penix. Because <sighs> because of a pending. Kirk stinks. It's not great. Look, Kirk's play. Look, I, I'm I'm repeating this. It's just some a people. meme at this point. I, I'm 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 repeating this for people who listen to the Grazer release show on PFF. But there is a. I'm not just saying this because Penix came into the game last game that they lost against Seattle. That was garbage time stuff. Right. What Kirk is struggling with this year is throwing the ball beyond ten yards and not putting the ball in harm's way under pressure because he can't move because he is not mobile right now. Kirk Cousins is tied for the most turnover-worthy plays in the NFL when pressured this season. It's him and it's Jalen Hurts. Kirk also has not good passing grades when he is asked to pass the ball beyond 10 yards. That was the yeah. reason why they lost. They ran the ball really well this past week. Tyler Algier, B. John Robinson, the offensive line was blocking really well, and yet they did not stand a chance in that Seattle Seahawks game as the score kind of got out of hand because Kirk could not push the ball down the field. There are sometimes reasons why people go, hey, let's put the backup quarterback in, and it doesn't make sense. It's just like, okay, well, logically get me there. I will agree with you if you can explain to me why this change of quarterback makes sense. And a lot of times, it's just that people want change. They want that guy out of there. They want to make a change one way or another. This is tangible reasons why Michael Penix Jr. could legitimately become the starting quarterback of this team. Because if there is something that Michael Penix Jr. ain't afraid to do, it's push the ball deep down the field. And that is what the Falcons offense is missing right now. And that's a reason why they were not competitive against the Seattle Seahawks. So I go have no, go I have off, no King. I have no idea if he plays, but like that's the Hail Mary to me. No, go off. I mean, well, I'll tell you what's very interesting. You bringing that up is that he is currently not on the board for DraftKings. So that can mean one of two things. One, they don't think he's a serious threat, although they'll let you usually like these markets will let you bet on whoever you want. Yeah, they'll take your money. They will. T- they will take your money because they, you know, if you're a fan of it, you can kind of get fans to make those bets. It tells you that there might be a readjustment being made. I actually, it's so funny you brought this up because I had subscribed to this theory. Um, I'll tell you when, after week one, after week one, I, I placed a sprint, a very light sprinkle wager on Penix to win this award because it was 60 to one at the time. I thought mm-hmm. Kirk looked awful week one where I was like, man, Penix plus 6,000 like quarterback. You don't need a full season to win. Goes back it's to true. my whole theory with that. It's true. Sprinkle, not a real wager. A um, yeah, and sure. now 
you know, Kirk's still playing, so that it's looking very unlikely. But like you said, if say Penix came in two weeks from now and the Falcons made the playoffs, like he's could very well win the award. Could or at very least, well win the award. It's not like right. completely out of line for a guy that's off the board at the moment. And it, I want to make it clear, it is more likely that Kirk Cousins just starts the entire season for the Falcons. Ver- yeah, great point. Like, very much more likely. Yes. Although we are, we are just simply painting the picture that could become a reality. That's all. exactly that's all we're doing. So I still have two picks here. You do, yes. You got three picks left total. You got two picks. You got one offensive pick and two defensive picks. Yeah, it's just like completely gross. I have all one for ar- each. All around. It really is. Oh, man. I don't think anybody that we're picking over the next 10 minutes is going to win the award, but it could just be shout out season for guys who are playing well enough. Right. That's always kind of what you're what you're looking for here. God, it's it's just I, I I'm going to make this pick with the thought like hey, you never know. He can get going in the second half of the year when nobody has pass rush production. It's the Dallas Turner conversation, right? Okay. Where it hasn't been great for Dallas Turner, right? It really, like, there's no way around it. It's, you know, when on the field, he wasn't overly productive, but this is still somebody that they traded plenty of assets to make sure they can get in this draft. Um. You know, obviously, he's in defense of Brian Flores that you think would get sack production. I think that they don't trust him in the run game. It looks like he's struggling in that area when on the field, but his snap count's going down. So once again, this is more of a, hey, the Vikings are a good football team that are going to be playing in high profile games. Mm -hmm. They need to eventually get him going, clearly, when you see that they could use even more pass rush. I don't know. I don't think they're just going to give up on Dallas Turner this year. And we know the talents in there. I I had my concerns with him as a prospect, but that didn't mean I didn't like him. It was just felt like he was very, very raw with how often he tried to win with speed to power at the college level. And Minnesota knows they need to get him going. So I'll make him my second to last defensive pick here because Pass rush production wins this award, and he doesn't have it yet for the most part. But he, but, you, but he's one of the rare guys on this list that should have the opportunity eventually to have it. So I, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree. It's a, it's a t- this field. I can't remember a defensive rookie of the year field like this. Uninspiring is how I would describe it. I mean, it, there's there. The, it, it's just not as it's just not as solidified at the very top. There's just a lot of like oh, there's so depth. Uh, like I'll tell you, my last defensive pick that I don't think that you're gonna that you're gonna select. I love how this player is playing. Right, he's not gonna win the award, but I think that again, like that's silly. My if you don't pick the next two guys that I'm gonna pick, both of my selections, offense and defense, are gonna be like that. They're playing well enough to where they should be within top five rankings of this award, and they're they're not gonna get considered just because it's 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 set up the way that it is. Yeah, I think that's right. That's how you're looking at it, where you're just trying to give shout outs or find something. I'm checking one more thing here because I'm I'm kind of going down the road, kind of going down the same road again as Dallas Turner. But I think this one, there might be even more hopefulness. Let's see. Defense or offense? Uh, no, it was defense, but I'm Who out of this. It? I don't even want to get into it. Okay. It's it's been very up and down for this player, and I think there I think there's some other stuff going on. So uh yeah, there's it's just too convoluted. I'm gonna go back to offense and regroup for defense because it's just sorting through so much different stuff. Okay. I'm gonna go back to offense here and and shout out one of my favorites, of course, and give Tyrone Tracy a pick here. There it is. I was wondering if we were gonna get it. He was on my list. I was wondering if we were gonna I mean, get him in here. None of Tyrone Tracy's problems with this award has to do with production based off opportunity. It's all opportunity. The Giants are a very frustrating franchise at times, and he's their best running back. Okay, it's not even remotely close. Yeah. Now, a lot of his, I think, instant production comes as a pass catcher. But we saw against Seattle what he could do on the ground. He averaged over seven yards per carry. I think what you love the most about him is what he brings to you as a pass catcher, former wide receiver in college that transitioned to running back. 
Tracy is the most explosive running back they have. And I think at some point the Giants will enter that phase. And it feels like we're close where they need to kind of figure out what they have for the future. Like Daniel Jones is not the future, right? And Devin Singletary is not the future. And they need to figure out who at wide receiver will be besides Malik neighbors. So if Tracy eventually gets the keys to this backfield and when Singletary was out, it looked like he deserved them going forward. Although the shares were still split when Singletary came back, he is all the talent. I mean, and he, once again, the production off of the opportunity was there when the opportunity existed. It's just that he hasn't had that out of the gate, but I think the giants internally know he's their best running back. I would agree. He was on my list. He was on my list. Sort of a long shot that I was just going to give it, uh, you know, a shout out to a Hail Mary to whatever. Yeah, whatever I'm curious who your long shots are, because there was another running back that I like as well. And I think you're going to you you might go there. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Before we get that to that. Got to tell people that if you are hiring right now for your small business and you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role, you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. We do a lot of hiring here at PFF. And, you know, it's not just about matching up the resume with exactly what the job is required, right? I think a lot of people can do that. It's about finding the right people for your team, the ones that can advance your brand, that understand your company, not just good hires now, but good hires for the future as well. LinkedIn, it's not just a job board. They'll help you hire professionals you can't hire anywhere else, uh, especially those who might not be looking for a new job, but they might be over to the perfect role, and you might have the perfect role for them. In a given month, 70% of you LinkedIn users don't even visit any other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, simply put, you are looking in the wrong place. 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. We know a lot of small businesses out there. Sometimes they can't devote that time and resources to be able to hire the way they want to. So I 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn jobs. You can hire a professional like a professional at LinkedIn. Post your job for free. F-E-R-F-R-E-E -E -E, at LinkedIn.com slash stock. LinkedIn.com slash stock. S-T-O-C-K to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Uh, first guy I'm going to go with, uh, I'll do offense first and then I will hit defense. Uh, I'm going Zach Frazier for my offensive one. Love it. He, he was is, awesome before he got hurt. He is not going to win the award. Offensive no. linemen never win it, but he is one of the top 10 highest graded rookies that we have offense and defensive side of the ball. He was fantastic. Uh, before he got hurt, ankle sprain has kept him out a little bit here. He will be back at some point this season, but he was looking like a, total starting offensive center that you love to build the offensive line around and uh he was great he was great at west virginia he was he was one of what felt like the safest players if that is even such a word that you can use yeah. in nfl draft and uh he was fantastic so i wanted to give him a shout out here he is somebody that i think deserves a nod on this list even though he doesn't have a chance of winning it which sucks and then my guy for the defense i'm sweating this Oh, for defense? Yeah, I love my last pick that I don't also think can't win, but I, I'm really sweating you're going to take him. What position does he play? Corner. Yeah, I'm picking Tyke Smith. Oh, okay. Oh, you weren't that, that one your guy? No, but Tyke Smith's been good as well. Like, that's a nice pick. Tyke Smith's been fantastic, man. Which, uh, above, yeah. 80, above 80 run defense grade, uh, above 70 pass rush grade, above 70 coverage grade. He has done it all for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And to be able to come in as a rookie in the slot and play right away and play as good as he is playing... I cannot under I cannot overstate how incredible of a job that is. He's forcing fumbles. He's getting interceptions. He is he is so in tune with that Todd Bowles defense and what they're asking him to do. He fits what they want to do, not only from a physical profile and a talent profile, but also a mental profile and how he fits with the rest of that group. He has been awesome. He is not going to win the award. He is not going to be considered, and that's a damn shame because he's playing like one of the best slot corners in the NFL already. So Tyke Smith from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers getting my final spot on the defensive side of the ball. All right. Mine was a player that there's some similarities to what you said, and that's Drew Phillips, the slot player yeah, for the Giants. Yep. That's the other one. That's the so other one. my last pick, and I could already see when the graphic gets posted, just getting slaughtered for having like Dallas Turner on the list, right? Who hasn't done anything. This is projection. This is the total opposite of that Dallas Turner pick. Phillips has been great. He's played Phillips out of the gate. He's been awesome. Yep. He's played out of the gate. Um, he's played almost 200 snaps. He's been phenomenal in coverage. He plays the slot for the Giants, third round pick, but he's also been really feisty and competitive against the run in the slot, which speaks a lot to 
way type, more productive in, in the run than I thought he was going to be. Really impressive. He plays some special teams. Drew Phillips has been... If this award was just truly about tape, which it's not, like, let's just call it what it is. This, that's why I took Dallas Turner last. It's not about tape. Dallas Turner has done nothing on tape to be a, a pick in this draft. And, you know, like, you, you just took Zach Frazier, which is a tape guy. He's not going to win the award. Right. He's not going to win the award. He'd probably be like, he'd be like 90th out of people that get votes. But if this board was based on tape, Frazier, Drew Phillips, they've been some of the best rookies in all of football. And it's a shame that that stuff doesn't really get quantified in awards like this. But the reality is um, they deserve a shout out at the end of this draft. Yep. I agree with you. All right. So just to recap for the audio only people, my five offensive Rookie of the years that I drafted, Caleb Williams, Brock Bowers, Brian Thomas Jr., Bo Nix, and Zach Frazier. Connors, five, Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., Drake May, and Tyrone Tracy. I think you're a little more star-studded on your offensive group than I am, but I'm pretty happy with how it went. Uh, defensive guys, my five, Jared Verse, Byron Murphy the second, Braden Fisk, Evan Williams, and Tyke Smith. And then for your defense, you got Laatu Latu, Quinion Mitchell, Trey, uh, Tavondre Sweat, Dallas Turner, and Drew Phillips. We would love to hear from you guys as well. Tell us your thoughts on our thoughts of these players, of our drafts, how it went, and also maybe some guys that deserve some shout-outs. There's plenty of rookies that yeah. we didn't mention. You know, Joe Alt, Dominic Pooney, Bucky Irving, Talise Fuanga, Kalen Bullock, Kamari Laster, Edrin Kruper. There's a lot of rookies who are playing well yeah. right now who really deserve some recognition, who we just don't, I don't think are going to win this award. So they're left out of this exercise. The comment section is a beautiful place for you guys to give a shout out for some rookies that did not get enough face time here in this episode. So we would love to hear from you. YouTube.com backslash at NFL Stock Exchange. If you are audio only at Tampa Bay Trey, at Connor J. Rogers is the best way to hit us up and give us your thoughts connor you got anything else before we get out of here really fun exercise glad we got to give some players uh, you know a little bit of a nod that deserve more attention and this this award it's it's exciting this year in a weird way on defense because it is so wide open and then offense it felt like Jaden was just kind of gonna you know sleepwalk to it and it's gotten a little tighter now not only because of his injury but caleb playing well and some skill guys playing really well so I love when we get to dive into what the rookies have done, and it's something that hopefully we'll dabble in a little bit more throughout the year. Yep. We got one more episode coming for you this week. It won't be as late as it was last week. It'll be more of that midweek episode. And yes, folks, after a long wait, after many requests, fix your franchise is back. We will be fixing a NFL team on Wednesday. Oh. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm going to make you wait until then. You got to check it out. I'm Trevor Sykema. That is Connor Rogers. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to the NFL Stock Exchange Podcast. We will see you for Fix Your Franchise on Wednesday.